Hey folks. Uh, it's been a few months since I've uh, done any videos to do with the firmware on the Verbal stuff and there's been a few changes recently so I figured I might as well do another one. So today we're going to be looking at the latest release which is the 23rd of July 2019. Now I have multiple uh, devices. I have um, a Throttle and a uh, Warbird uh, base with a CM1 grip. And I also just this week got myself a CM2 base and a uh, CM2 grip. So I'm going to start off with a throttle because you're only supposed to have one device connected at, at any time when you're playing around with profiles or the firmware. So currently the only thing it's hooked in is me throttle. So we'll just load up the software. If you do happen to have more than... Um, one device connected, it will pop up a warning to try and warn you. So, first part is upgrading the firmware. So you click on the firmware tab. Uh, this here toggles expert mode off and on. I usually leave it on. So we'll click firmware. Now by default, it should be pointing to the right firmware. If you have multiple versions of the um, VPC software installed, they actually share a single configuration file, so you need to check to make sure this is pointing at wherever you installed this software to. Currently for me it's not, so I need to go and point it at the right firmware file. So that's the one for this one. So now we've selected the right file. We have the device selected here. So just click Auto Start Firmware Update and close the wee warning box. Right, so that's the first part done. Okay, so the firmware's been installed and now the configuration on the device is currently blank. So we need to tell it what exactly it is. So to do that, we go to the profile tab. And here is where we configure it. Now, um, this tutorial is talking about the throttle. So, the software is a wee bit clever recently, which is great because uh, sh it should only show you the available options that it thinks you've got connected. So um, if you have a new V3 throttle, your drop down, you might get an option saying throttle, Mongoose T50 and then CM. So if you have a little uh, analog joystick on your, uh, your throttle, select the one with CM. If you don't, then this is the one for you. Next is the sub category. There are two available profiles here. And of course, as I said, if you have a CM, that you'll have probably a CM string in these two. The default one is five-way mode modifier. Now currently I do not use that one myself. The five-way modifier uses a rotary mode selector to change buttons B1 to B8 to make only those buttons change in different modes. Um, I don't use that myself. I use Joystick Gremlin. I've, I've done tutorials on it. You can go look them up if you want. So I'm just gonna select the no modifier. Now, there has been a couple of changes, so let's go through what they are. First change is this, this little tick box. Split the virtual device by 32 buttons. Now, um, Windows takes up the 128 uh, DX, DirectX input buttons, um, and Windows uh, control panel, little joystick uh, tester you can use, it only actually shows 32 and some programs, uh, for example, as far as I'm aware as of today, Elite Dangerous only allows up to 32 button inputs. And that could be a problem if you want to use all the buttons on your throttle. It won't affect the joysticks, but it will affect the throttle. So, Verbal um, added this extra feature here. So if I happen to tick this and then do the Create Profile, what will happen is it will break up the joystick so you'll have one joystick device, a virtual joystick device, that will have all the axes and 32 buttons. And then you'll have an extra device um, that will show up, and it won't show up in, in Windows Device Manager, but it will show up when you look at joystick devices, that will have just the extra buttons on it past, um, past button 32. So I think there's 58 buttons on a V1 throttle, so you'll get 33 to 58 as a different joy device. So it'll allow you to use Elite Dangerous to actually, you know, you can actually configure them in Elite Dangerous. 
So that's what that's for. Personally speaking, don't use it myself. Next up, we have save current calibration. Now, I have not used this myself, but apparently what it's supposed to do is pull the current configuration out of the device, uh, grab the, the, the calibration part from, from it, and then put it inside the new profile you're creating. So whenever you write the profile back to the device to actually tell it what it is, your calibration is already done because it's just lifted the, the original version that's currently on the device. I have not tried this and in today's tutorial, I'm going at this as an OOB out of box experience. So I'm not going to use that. So I've selected the options I need and I'm going to click create profile. And there you go, it's filled in the blanks. And now the last thing to do is save that back to the device so now the device knows what it is and it's going to display this with the correct information. Now, in the lower uh, right-hand corner, the Wii Windows USB device um, installation thing's popping up right now, so that's what it's doing. And there we go. So that is the second part done. So now we have one final thing to do, and that's to set the calibration values. Now what calibration basically does is you set it in calibration mode and you move all the analog axes full deflection from zero to 100% one at a time. And now what happens is the firmware then records the max values that are reached and uses it to set the percentage values correctly. Because you can see right now, it's actually got kind of silly looking values. So first thing I do is just make sure I click load. I just wanna make sure I'm talking to the device correctly. And then we go to calibrate axes. Now you need to move the axes one at a time. Now for the throttle, that means I have to unlock the two throttles to move independently. So I'm just going to work my way around. So first to start with the left throttle, all the way forward, all the way back, all the way forward, all the way back. And then I work around the rest and do the same. Now the next one I'm going to do here is the little scroll wheel, that's, which is on the right hand throttle. Now these are different as in they actually have a center notch. So when I move it forward and backward, I put it in the center position. It's important to do that for these. And then on the top right, I have the little analog lever. And because there's no center position on it, I just stick it back to zero. Now if you're wondering why this top axis here is currently at full deflection. That's actually both left and right throttles are all the way back. Like one of them's inverted, but I'm not going to go into that right now. The last two things to do are the analog wheels. So same as before, all the way to the left, all the way to the right, and then put it in the middle. And same for A2. Now that's it. The ranges now have been set in it. We just click save calibration. And then one final thing, save it back to the device. By the way, sometimes you might have to click on that twice. It only is actually doing it when you see this little bar appear. So if you click on it and it doesn't, nothing happens like it just happened to me, click it again. Okay, so that's the third part done. So for the throttle, there's one last thing you may want to set. Now, if you have a non V3 throttle, that is one that does not have the little analog uh, slew control, then um, you may want to enable your axis lock. Now explain what that means. If we go to the button tab here, and the little lock bar that physically locks the left and right throttle sides together, if I were to slide it just a wee drop, you can see there, that the button there's a button going active and inactive so the non v3 throttles have a little detect switch which 
allows the firmware to know that they're physically locked together. And what that means is it will um, copy the value from one axis to another from the, the, uh, the left to the right throttle. So to enable this, you go to the axis tab, you go axis action button and you go one. Button mode is off, so it's active off. And you just leave the rest of it as it is. So it's basically gonna say, look, when I have this little switch over and they're locked together, I want you to take the values from axis one and directly copy them into axis two values so the throttles are always 100% matched. Now you've set that up, just click save. I'm gonna click that three times. Just make sure this comes up when you click save. It seems to be a wee bit intermittent. And there you go. Okay, so now the device has been set up, I've got the configuration done, I've calibrated it. Now what I'm gonna do is what I generally do after I get the thing up and running, before I start tinkering around and maybe playing with stuff. I'm gonna to go to the profile tab, click load, make sure I've got the current configuration that the device is configured with inside the program, and then I'm gonna export it to file. Let's put it with the other ones. Change the date round. So there we go. It's the date of the build and what it is, the V1 throttle, and then save. So now if I start playing around with things and I manage to mess something up, I can go back into the profile tab and use the import from file to load it back in and then save it back to the device.